that's a, a very structured answer for a very structured question, I'd say. Um, so this one is the second one. Um, the availability of open data and linked data in Italy is still limited in relationship to demand. Uh, cultural and organizational um, breaks in the public administration uh, determined that often it's not um, seen as very strategic for the processes, even though it's important for citizens. You may think about the uh, possible fluxes with uh, re-elaborated data, enriched data, uh, put in relationship with other data, mashup, and everything is um, possible thanks to collaborative form, uh, to forms of collaborative citizenship. Is it uh, an, a hypothesis to realize uh, an, a unique, unified platform, a bottom-up platform where the citizens can um, put these crowdsourced data from now, uh, which can be, you know, uh, available for themselves, but also for the public administration, would it be enough to stimulate the, the public administration to make others uh, available, uh, other data available, or there might be the risk that on the other side, no one will listen? Um, one of the reasons why the uh, Soviet Union collapsed is because uh, it could not uh, survive in, in an open society. Um, no society today is isolated. Uh, so for a certain set of, of bureaucrats, uh, whether elected or, or, or appointed, uh, to pretend that they know what is uh, the best application of a given set of uh, government data. And uh, they have all the creativity, all the fantasy, all the resources to have tested or simulated these different uses. And they have established that none of them matter is totally ridiculous. And those countries that allow their elected or appointed officials and bureaucrats to make these kinds of decisions do nothing but define that those countries are not going to be competitive. And each country might have been free to decide like this um, a few decades ago. But, for example, uh, in the Eurozone, it happens that the countries belonging to the Eurozone are not free to decide that they, they, cannot, that they can afford not to be competitive. Because the country that decides that it can afford not to be competitive it's a drag on the others because by not growing it cannot finance its debt and if it is not financing its debt is going to default and if it is defaulting the ripple effects of the default are going to uh, poison all the other economies so uh, if a bottom-up approach can help and I think it very well could, and there are examples of, of uh, bottom-up approaches already, um, for example, uh, in uh, uh, political data being organized uh, in Italy uh, in open polis, um, then it is, it is a duty of uh, everybody who believes that, that uh, the country can become better, more competitive, can offer wider choices for uh, the enterprise and the individuals to, to make these bottom-up approaches available. I see. 
Okay, so now for one of the last questions, which is very close to my personal interest, uh, when it comes to open, open knowledge and uh, the spread of um, culture, in my case, for example, because my question is about um, the new kinds of uh, publications, you know, the use of uh, ebook readers, Especially, in my opinion, it would be a great idea to use them in schools, but I don't see that coming uh, very soon anywhere, at least here in Italy. Um, and I want to know your opinion about the one of the laws that's being discussed right now in Italy, which is to impose a maximum of 15% um, off books. So I was wondering, what do you think about this, especially in a world where, you know, the spread of, of data and information and culture is, is becoming so massive? Do you think it's, it, it's intelligent, you know, to, to make a law of that sort? Mm -hmm. um, there is a, a, a new service um, in the uh, United States um, uh, one dollar book scan. It enables you to send your books to this facility and for one dollar per book it will scan your books and give them back to you as an electronic text. It is just one example of how the transformation from the physical storage of knowledge on paper to the much more dynamically accessible um, compendium of personal knowledge in electronic form is, is going to happen. It is going to enormously accelerate. Uh, four or five years ago, I started to give away my books, my physical books. Um, I have sent them to Japan, to Romania, to Turkey, to um, Sweden. Uh, I keep uh, bringing them to the Singularity University uh, every time uh, I go um, because they are uh, one of the most prized uh, physical possessions that I, I have. I, I have, I have uh, uh, many, many thousands of books. and. And I knew that I needed to start to learn to live in a world where books stopped being physical. So I wanted to be the first to experience how it was. And these days I am extremely comfortable uh, with, the, with, with, with the understanding that I will stop owning my physical books uh, and I will only have electronic books. Um, the whole concept of what it means um, to be a book is going to change because a lot of uh, the defining parameters of a book come not from what the author wanted to write, but come from the nature of the publishing process. Uh, the, the fact that you cannot find a, a book of 10 pages in the bookstore even if I only wanted to write 10 pages, is, is uh, evident because it wouldn't be economically possible to start distributing uh, uh, books that were that short. But you can find on Amazon.com ebooks for Kindle that are just 10 pages and you pay 90 cents for them and you think and, and you realize that you get a great value because they have been liberated by the constraints of uh, what, what used to be the books before. Once again, uh, defining upfront what are the rules and regulations that should restrict the experimentation of new formats is extremely dangerous. Already, there is a punishing factor when you assign a different taxation consumer taxation, value-added tax, VAT, on the e-book rather than the physical book. In many countries, Italy included, the physical books 
have a small or zero level of VAT and ebooks are equated to software and they have a 20% VAT in Italy. So they are already disadvantaged. Uh, to impose that uh, an enterprise cannot apply a discount larger than X is, is an arbitrary restriction of, of, uh, of uh, trade and, and free uh, initiative. And uh, I, I don't think it is uh, reasonable to, to impose it. The forces that are changing uh, the landscape, however, are much larger and they are not going to be impacted by decisions like, like uh, de deciding or imposing what kind of discounts uh, can be maximally applied. As far as ebooks are concerned in the, in the schools, um, that is a very, very uh, large discussion because the whole educational system, not only the tools that are used, whether they are ebooks or intelligent uh, blackboards or whiteboards, uh, or whether you can use Wikipedia in a school uh, and things like that, uh, uh, the school system is definitely in trouble. And the speed of technological change is accelerating in a manner that the slow pace of change with which the school is trying to adapt to the future uh, is, is definitely not uh, capable of catching up. Yeah, I think that's one of the, the points where it, it would really be interesting you know, to, to invest there, both uh, from an economical point of view, you know, from a, a state point of view, and from a technological point of view. You know, I think it would be extremely useful you know, to to make the technology, you know, the, the real technology available in learning.